I think it's pretty funny that I'm making a video about the real real while wearing a shirt from Forever 21 that I thrifted. Won't nobody love you the way they should. Won't nobody check up on you, make sure you're good. Won't nobody check those body tendons by your neck. Hi everyone, my name is Becky Park. I'm a part-time reseller. I resell clothing and accessories and shoes on a ton of different online platforms, but very recently I started sending things into the real real. And what I'm gonna do for you for this video is I will have timestamps down below for the different parts of the video just because I feel like I have some explaining to do. And then what we're gonna do is talk about my sales from the last three months on the real real. So if all you care about is what I actually sold on the real real, then you can go down to the timestamps in the description and skip around to get to the spot that you care about. But I wanted to start off just by sharing with you why I decided to you know, try out the real real as a different reselling platform. So I will say I was always very skeptical of it just because I don't find a lot of high-end brands. That's, you know, the truth. I don't find a lot of luxury brands. And that's typically what the real real deals with are those high-end brands, your Chanel's, your Louis Vuitton's, your, you know, that sort of thing. I know that they will take brands like Patagonia sometimes or even Adidas, but generally speaking, they want you to send them, you know, your Bottega Veneta, that sort of stuff. And I don't find that kind of stuff. So I was like, what would even be the point? Like I'll send them one thing every six months when I find something interesting. And why wouldn't I want to sell that myself? However, I know that Jack from the Jack Valentine YouTube channel, he talks about the real real a lot. I know Daniela from the Daniela Malkasian um, YouTube channel. I don't know if I'm saying your last name right, Daniela. <laughs> I just realized they talk a lot about the real real. So I felt like I was hearing enough about it to be like, like maybe I could try with the random things that I do find here and there. What really sealed the deal for me though was Denali from El Ducho. She does have a YouTube channel, but what I actually saw of hers that inspired me to start on The Real Real was over on her Instagram and she shared her The Real Real numbers. And when I tell you that my jaw about hit the floor, I was like, what, what is this? Um, I don't remember what they were off the top of my head. I will put a picture here and explain a little bit, but she has had some serious luck with the real real. And it's all very passive. It's all you just kind of throw things in boxes, you send it their way. And from what I can tell with my very limited experience with the real real, and this definitely is in line with what I heard people say when they would talk about the real real. One, it seems like they're much more organized and thread up. Um, if you have been following my YouTube reselling journey for a while, you know that for, you know, maybe close to a good year, year and a half, I was pretty active with thread up. I was sending them a lot of boxes um, and I was making some decent money doing that, but they always just seemed very disorganized. Um, they lost a few of my boxes. They lost a few of my items and it just left a really bad taste in my mouth. And so one thing that I had heard about the real real is that they're just much more organized. The way that it works is when you sign up to consign with the real real, they actually assign like an like an actual person to talk you through your first few boxes. And the way that it worked was my person would literally like call me on the phone. She's like, if you want, we can FaceTime, we can tax, we can do whatever. But the first time it was literally over the phone and I just kind of went through my pile, told her what I had and I could hear her on the other end typing it in and even kind of confirming for me in that moment, yeah, that's something you should send in. Mm, that one, they're not gonna accept it at this time. So it prevented you from sending them stuff that they weren't gonna accept anyway. And I feel like it's that back and forth process where things have the potential to get lost the most. So I don't know. It was it was really nice to have someone kind of holding my hand through it. Um, I think from here on out, I don't have to go through that process. I can just send them boxes and, you know, write out what it is that I'm going to send. But for those reasons, I was like, let's just give this a try. I have heard some horror stories as well. And this is not sponsored by The Real Real or anything like that, by the way, because I they barely know who I am. <laughs> I've made, I'll share with you in a little bit, I've, I've not made that much money for them or for myself, but I've heard that their authentication may not be as amazing as they make it out to be. I've heard that they can lose pieces as well. But for the most part, I have, from my own experience only, 
I have found them to be very professional and easy to work with. So, you know, there's that. That being said, I have not found that many pieces that are worth sending into them, but I will share with you everything that has sold for me on the real reel in the months of February, March, and April, as well as where I got these items, because I just shared with you, I don't really come across luxury very often, so how did I find these items to send them? Well, I'll tell you, and I'll also kind of share with you as I'm going through what sold, what I'm learning about the real reel, and what I'm learning about how I want to utilize them as part of my reselling portfolio moving forward. I kind of of decided with this first couple boxes to just send them anything and everything that would apply because I just wanted to learn by going through the process. And I knew that by doing that, there were probably some pieces that I was going to make a lot less money from than if I had just, you know, listed it myself on the reselling platforms that I list to. Um, but I just wanted to experience that for myself. And also, it's never a bad thing to have someone else taking your pictures, taking care of customer service, and that sort of thing. So let's go ahead and talk about what's sold. And like I said, I can kind of share with you um, what I'm learning about the real real through my sales. So the very first thing of mine that I sent them that sold was on February 5th. I believe my first box had maybe like 30-ish items. And it was a lot of stuff that I had already listed, but I just went ahead and pulled because I was like, you know, I'm not able to sell this myself. Let's see if the real real is. One of those items was this pair of Frida Salvador leather slides. I had found these in Seattle when I went last summer to visit my parents. I went to a Goodwill that was probably like 30, 40 minutes away from them. It was the bougiest Goodwill I have ever been to. They had so many amazing pieces, this being one of them. Um, these retailed for, I don't remember, like 500-ish. They sold on the Real Real website for $125, which isn't bad. And my commission rate for that price range was 40%. So I got a payout of $50. However, I had $15.27 into those. That was my average cost of goods for those slides from that Goodwill. If I remember correctly, I think I actually paid even more for these, but you know, because of some cheaper pieces that I had picked up on that same trip, my average cost of goods was only $15.27. So I ended up making a net profit on those of $34.73, which isn't bad. Um, if I had waited longer, I probably could have sold these myself on a platform like eBay or even TradeZ or Poshmark, um, but I had had them listed for you know, at least half a year and they hadn't sold. And that's why I was like, I'm gonna just pull them, see if the real real can sell them. And they sold them so fast, like within a handful of days. And that is one thing that I will say about the real real is they do sell things very quickly, which is amazing because I have a hard time moving higher end pieces quickly. I typically have to sit on them for a while and then they'll sell. So that was very refreshing to have these pieces moving quickly. Um, the next sale was on February 11th and they were a pair of lamb, which is the Gwen Stefani fashion line that I don't think she does anything with anymore, but it was kind of popular back in its heyday. It was very like steampunk, you know, very like rock and roll, but it was this pair of plaid print straight leg pants. I mean, I feel like I've seen Gwen Stefani wear these like eight times. Um, I picked them up at a local Goodwill to me for $5.99 and I was shocked because I don't usually find stuff like this in my local Goodwills. I did list this. I had it listed for a handful of months, but then when I decided that I was going to try out the real real, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to send these in. So I pulled them. I sent them in. They sold again very quickly for $45. My commission rate on that was 30%. So I got a payout of $14 which is not awesome. <laughs> and my cost of goods was $5.99. So my net profit on that was $7.51. For sure, I should have just held on to those and, you know, kept them listed on my various reselling platforms and just waited for the right buyer to come along. It would have taken probably a few more months, but I definitely would have made more than $7.51. But again, I just wanted to try it out and see. The next thing to sell was on February 12th, and it was this pair of Veronica Beard mid-rise straight leg jeans. I have had a couple pairs of Veronica Beard jeans. I typically find them at Plato's Closet. I have a hard time moving them. I think Veronica Beard 
dresses and blouses and blazers do really well, they're not super well known for their jeans, which is one of the reasons why I sent them in. I believe that these actually, my friend she won sourced for me out of Plato's Closet. Um, this was before she was like recently hardcore. So she would just go sourcing and like buy stuff for me. So I bought these off of her for $12. They sold on the real real for $52. The commission rate was 30%. So my payout was $16. But when you factor in my cost of goods, I actually made a profit of $3.60. Sense. Veronica Beard Jeans, I am just going to sell myself from now on. The next thing to sell was on February 13th, and it was this Mark by Mark Jacobs leather shoulder bag. Um, I sent them probably like four or five Mark by Mark Jacobs bags. They were all bags given to me from a friend at church, and we worked out a deal where I'm going to give her 50% of whatever I net on any of her pieces. So I sent about five of her bags to the real real just to, again, see like what it would be like to sell Mark by Mark Jacobs bags. Um, they sent back a about three of them, I want to say. They only accepted two, um, this being one of them. So it sold on their site for $80. Um, it had a commission rate of 30%. My payout was $24. So I gave her $12 because that's half of what I earned from sending it in. The next thing to sell was on February 13th, so the same day as that bag. It was this pair of Allen Edmonds leather dress loafers. In case you didn't know, um, the Real Real does take men's clothing and shoes and accessories as well. And Ellen Edmonds is one of the brands that they accept. Ellen Edmonds shoes are crazy expensive retail. I'm talking over two, three hundred dollars. Um, they sold for forty dollars on the Real Real. My commission rate was thirty percent. I got a payout of twelve dollars. I had nine ninety nine into those because I picked them up at a Goodwill near my in laws. So I made a profit of two dollars and one cents on those shoes. I should have and will from now on list all Allen Edmonds myself because I typically am able to sell them for around fifty dollars, which usually gives me a profit of like. 25 to 30 dollars, you know, depending on how much I paid for them. But yeah, Allen Edmonds, I would just list myself. One of the annoying things about the Real Real is that they almost always have a 20% coupon that you can use, and you can use it on like almost anything. It's like 20 or 30% actually. So a lot of my pieces I would notice were purchased with the use of like a 20 or 30% off coupon, and you have to eat the cost of those savings. So that is really frustrating. That's why a lot of times things get sold for a lot less than you think that they would, and you look and you're like, oh, they used a coupon. Um, the next thing to sell, it was kind of a bummer. It sold on Valentine's Day. It was by the brand PRPS, which is kind of like a Japanese streetwear brand. I found it at my local Play-Dohs. It just looked so cool. It was this like graphic skull print crew neck sweatshirt in like this bright reddish maroonish color. I paid $5.14 for that. That was my average cost of goods for that trip. Although I think this sweater was actually more than that. I believe I went when it was like a 50 or 75% off sale. Um, it sold on the website for $44. I had a commission rate of 30% on that, so I got a payout of $13. And once you subtract my cost of goods, I made a profit of $8.06. I would have gotten a lot more for that if I just kept it on my reselling platforms. But, you know, I had it listed for a few months. It was getting some attention, but I wasn't really getting offers on it. And I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to see if they'll take it and if they can move it for me, which they did, but I just didn't make very much. So if I come across that brand, ever again. I'll probably just list it myself. This next sale, however, was amazing. So this took place on February 17th. It was by the brand Tome, and it was this geometric print knee length dress. It was like a very interesting wrap dress, kind of like kimono style. I had purchased it myself from Kevin and Kristen over at Voyages of Verb. They were doing a big sale on their Shopify account, and so I paid $24.50 for it for myself because I thought it was really cute, and I thought I would wear it to work and church and places like that. I got it home. I just didn't love how it fit me. It just wasn't, you know, sometimes you just know, like, this is a cute dress, but it's it's not cute on me. Um, so I had it listed. This brand retails for so much, but comps were literally all over the place. And I think I had it listed for like 50 or $75. Wasn't really getting any hits. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to pull it from my platforms and I'm going to send it into the real real. They sold it for $165 and 75 cents. I was 
shocked. I just didn't expect it to move for that much. Um, my commission rate for that piece was 50%. So I got a payout of $83. Again, I did have $24 and 50 cents into it. So I still made a net profit of $58 and 38 cents. So this is a brand that for sure, if I were to ever find it in the wild, I would a thousand percent send it into the real real because I have had real life experience of having it listed and just not getting a lot of attention on it. But it sold for a good amount um, at the real real. So I was very happy about that. On February 18th, I sold this Joie silk floral print blouse. It sold for $36. Honestly, that's about what I was expecting it to sell for. I didn't think that it would sell for a ton. Um, the commission rate on that was 30%. I got a payout of $11. I had $14.10 into that item because I picked it up at a pop-up consignment sale that I like to frequent. And that's where I find kind of like my best stuff, if you will. My average cost of goods for that particular trip was $14.10. So I lost money on that sale. I lost $3.30. I assumed that Joie wouldn't give me a huge payout. And so now I've learned from that example and they have a couple more of my Joie pieces that haven't moved yet. But now I know that Joie, I should just sell myself because I probably would have sold that blouse for around that same amount, you know, maybe $36-ish. But I would have gotten, you know, an 80% cut or an 85% cut depending on where it sold versus a 30% cut. So again, I learned my lesson, not going to send them any more Joie unless maybe I've been sitting on it for 18 years and it hasn't sold. So if I were you, I would not send in your joie to the real real. The next item that sold was on February 19th. This is another brand that I learned I should just sell it myself. The brand is Equipment and it was this silk animal print button up top. It sold on the real real for $40 with a 30% commission rate. So I got a payout of $12, but I picked it up at a Goodwill near my in-laws for $5.99. So my net profit on that was $6.01. Equipment used to be one of those brands that people would get so excited about finding. It's kind of like rails where people were just like ecstatic about finding rails back in the day. Both brands are just not at the same level that they once were at. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to send it in and just see how it would do. And I don't think I even had that one listed. I just, you know, got it home, went ahead and listed it to the real real. But I would have definitely made more net profit had I just sold it myself. The next piece to sell was on February 24th. It was this David Meister? Meister. I think it's Meister. Asymmetrical long dress in a very neutral black color. This I had picked up at that pop-up consignment sale as well. And my cost of goods that day was $9.96. So it only sold for $36. Pretty sure that one of those coupons was used. It was at a 30% commission rate, so I got a payout of $11. My profit on that dress was $0.84. Cents. However, I would argue that David Meister, I would continue to send into the real real because I have a hard time moving it myself when I list it. I've had a few pieces by that brand. It sits and sits and sits before it sells. So what I would change, however, is just not picking it up for so much. I would only pick it up maybe at like the bins, maybe if there are like dollar days or I mean, I would only pick it up for under $5 to send it into the real real because you know, it's selling for like $36 and your payout is not going to be huge. The next thing to sell was on March 4th and it was another Mark by Mark Jacobs bag. This one was a mini bucket bag in a leather exterior. This one sold for $65. So it's funny to me that they don't take all Mark by Mark Jacobs when they were able to sell both of mine for $65 and up. It seems like those are things they should be taking versus the David Meister versus like Joie. I don't know, but it sold for 65. My commission on that was 30%. My payout was $20. So because that was one of the bags that I got from my friend at church and we had agreed to split the net profit, I got $10 and she got $10. I did want to take a moment and talk to you a little bit about Skillshare, who is today's sponsor for this video. I know I told you earlier that this video was not sponsored by The Real Real, but it is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online community of learners who want to have the flexibility to learn about anything and everything. And that's the really cool thing about Skillshare is that they have a ton of online courses about literally anything and everything that you might want to learn about. So in my first Skillshare video, I shared how I was using Skillshare to take 
courses on productivity and social media management. You know, the last video where I talked about Skillshare, I was using Skillshare almost as like a motivational tool because I was listening to um, just some of the courses on how to be motivated and how to achieve goals. Today's feature, however, if you will, is a lot more practical. I wanted to make an Excel sheet to keep all of my real, real information in one space. And guys, I am horrible with Excel, or actually I'm using Google Sheets, but I'm horrible with spreadsheets. I don't know how to use them. I don't know how to set up the formulas. Um, I am a lost cause when it comes to Excel. And I've tried learning before. So what I did was I went to Skillshare and I just literally typed in spreadsheet in the search bar. And I went to the first course because it had 912 students and it was called Excel Spreadsheets Made Easy, which I loved. Now it shows that it's an hour and nine minutes long, but when you open it up, you can see it's got 13 lessons and you can see what, you know, lesson you want to skip to if you don't need to study for example the basics of excel because you know how to like put the numbers in and stuff um, but i looked at like formatting and calculating and those were the lessons that i listened to because those were the lessons that were going to be helpful to me um this was pretty cool because the instructor was named karen rogers she had a really nice um english accent i'll let you listen to it hold on is that a formula always starts with the equal sign. So she had a very nice voice to listen to and I was able to figure out how to get the formulas in so that I didn't have to sit there and like manually subtract or I, that's what I used to do, you guys. It's so embarrassing. I used to put numbers into my spreadsheets just to manually do the math. It's so embarrassing. But now I know how to, you know, do the formula. So just wanted to shout out Skillshare and let you know that the first thousand people to sign up with my link down in the description below get a free month of Skillshare, which is amazing. So definitely check out that link if you're interested. But moving on, the next thing to sell, this was one of those items that I have had listed for so long and I was just so sick of looking at it. So I pulled it. I actually sent them three jeans by this brand. So this sold on March 9th and the brand is Rag and Bone. I remember when I used to get so excited about Rag and Bone and I don't know, like I think definitely you have to pick up the more current styles. Um, and typically when I find Rag and Bone, I think they're older styles, which is why I've been having, you know, not the best luck with them. But these were a pair of mid-rise skinny leg jeans just very like run of the mill probably came out like five six years ago they sold for $35 on the real real my commission was 30% so I got a payout of $11 however I had purchased these about two and a half years ago from an Instagram friend who was no longer going to be reselling. So she was liquidating, but like, I think I bought 10 items from her and it came out to $250 because I was also paying for shipping. So really like kind of got ripped off a little bit, not going to lie. So I had $25 into these. I mean, I, I'm lucky if I've broken even from those 10 pieces that I bought off of her for $250. This is probably one of the last things to sell from that sale, but I lost $14.50. So it was not the best thing for me to pick up. Probably the worst thing for me to send into the real real. But again, I just needed it gone. I was so sick of looking at it. I'd had it for so long. At least it finally moved. But the lesson that I learned here was rag and bone, not super worth sending in to the real real. Like definitely don't source rag and bone to send to the real real because you're not going to make that much money off of it. I would just sell it yourself if I were you. The next thing to sell was on March 10th and it was this theory floral print blazer. This was pretty sad. I should have just listed this myself. It sold for $60 on the real real and that's probably close to what I would have sold it for on like Poshmark or eBay. I had it listed for a while and I had it listed too high. I'm not going to lie. I probably had it listed for like $125 or something like that. Um, my commission rate on that was 30%. So I got a payout of $18. That's why I'm saying I should have just sold it myself. And even if I had sold it for 60, which is a lot lower than I would have wanted to sell it for, had I sold it for 60, I would have made 80% of that versus 30%. So that was pretty sad. I had $14.99 into that because it's something that I purchased when I went to a Goodwill in like the Chelsea area of New York um, when I went last summer to visit my best friend. So I made a profit of $3.01 on that. 
wah, wah, that was really sad. The next sale was on March 14th. This was also a theory sale. This was a purple, they called it a wool blazer. I would have called it a peacoat. I think that's what I called it when I listed it. I did not see it being a blazer. If it's a blazer, it's a very bulky one, but this sold for $59.50 at the Real Real. Again, my commission rate was 30%, so I got a payout of $18. However, the difference is I only had $1.50 into this because I bought this from my friend when she was moving to another state and she just you know, didn't want any of her reselling stuff with her. That's a lot of stuff to move. So I bought out her inventory and the cost of goods per item came out to about a dollar and 50 cents. So I made a profit of $16 and 35 cents. I am very certain that I would have been able to sell that piece for around that same amount myself. And therefore I would have made, you know, obviously a much bigger net profit because again, I'm going to make 80, 85% of that sale. But I just wanted to test out what happened if you send theory to the real real. And what I learned is you don't, you don't send theory to the real real. You're not going to make a lot of money. You should just sell it yourself. The next sale was on March 16th and it was a utility jacket by the brand Barber. Barbauer? I don't know how to say it. It is an English brand and this was actually something that my best friend in New York gave to me maybe the last time that I left or like two times ago that I left. It was too small on her and she's like, I just don't wear it. Um, I have a raincoat. I have like a Lululemon raincoat and I just didn't reach for this one very much. And so um, I did wear it a handful of times, but when I was sending things into the real real, I was like, let me just try this out. This sold for $105, which is much more up my alley. Yes, please, to selling things for $105. I honestly could have probably sold it for around that much if I had listed it myself as well. So this is one of those situations where it's like, do you want the ease of not having to ship, not having to take pictures? And if so, you know, maybe it's worth it to send in your barber, barbauer, I, I don't know how to say it, pieces to the real real. Um, I just wanted to see how it went. There were a few like water stains on the exterior, but the commission rate was 50%. I got a payout of $53 and it was a, you know, just flat $53 payout because of the fact that I got that for free. So I'll take it. The next thing to sell was a Michael Kors wool blazer. This sold for $76 and I was kind of surprised that they took it. If I'm not mistaken, I thought it was a Michael Michael Kors blazer. Maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe it really was Michael Kors. Um, my commission rate was 30%. My payout was $23 and I only had a dollar and two cents into it because it's something that I got from a local reseller buyout and that was my average cost of goods was a dollar and two cents. So I made a profit on that of $21.78, which was really great great. Um, I do think that men's blazers are something that are worth sending into the real real because I don't know about you. I have had a lot of men's blazers that I will list. They're in great condition. They're by pretty good brands. They take forever to sell forever. So I think if I were to come across more men's blazers in good brands, um, if my cost of goods is really low, I think I would definitely just send them in to the real real. The next sale is my best one through the real real so far. It was amazing. So it's old on March 18th. It was a Burberry 1980s trench coat. The reason I sent it in is because my mother-in-law gave me two Burberry trench coats for free. She just gave them to me. I think that they had been gifted to her and my father-in-law like in the 90s or in the 80s or something by my father-in-law's sister. They wore them for, you know, a decade or two. I don't know. But she was like, these have been sitting in my closet and we don't wear these. Like we don't wear them out anywhere. So why don't you see if you can sell them? I didn't know if they were real which is why I sent them into the real real. So I sent them both. They sent back one and I think I know why. I think it's because there's like a patch maybe in one spot where there was a hole or a rip or something. But this one they accepted. They called it a 1980s trench coat and it sold for $595. I got a 60% commission on that. So I made a profit of $357 on that. And best of all, they were able to give me peace of mind of authenticating it. Um, again, I've heard that their authentication process may not be as good as they led us to believe, but the thing is, 
I'm putting that authentication on them. I don't have to do it. I'm not responsible for it. And if they sell something of mine and someone wants to tell them that it's actually not real, that's not on me. You know what I'm saying? So that's where I get so nervous about buying luxury items because I'm so scared that I'm going to accidentally sell someone something that's fake and I would feel horrible. But like if it's through the real real, it's not really my fault. You know what I mean? If it ends up being a fake, it's their fault. And that's why um, with this kind of stuff, I just send it to them right away because I'm like, I don't want to be responsible for this. Now, I think that you can sometimes have really good luck selling vintage Burberry trench coats yourself. So it's a toss up of like, if you're sure that it's authentic and you want to list it yourself, I think you totally can. Again, Jack from the Jack Valentine YouTube channel. I know he's sold a good number of Burberry coats, both by himself and through the real real. If you want to learn more about like which one is best, you can check out his channel. I don't have that much experience. This was my first time selling a Burberry trench coat. Um, and the other one I have listed myself in my own, you know, Poshmark, eBay, Mercari, those places. So I'll be able to report back to you which one did better. So far, that one has been listed for a pretty long time and is taking a long time to sell. I have it priced around, you know, the same price of what this item sold for, I believe. Maybe I have it priced higher, but yeah, we'll see what happens. The next thing to sell was on March 29th. It was a pair of Stuart Weitzman, kind of like champagne colored, I want to say kitten heels if I remember correctly. They just call them Stuart Weitzman pumps. Their descriptions are not very descriptive, but these sold for $35. The commission rate was 30%. I got a payout of $11. Again, my mother-in-law gave those to me for free, so I made a profit of $11 on those. The next thing to sell was on March 31st, and it was a Michael Michael Kors leather chain link shoulder bag. So again, very interesting that they took a Michael Michael Kors bag, but not all of my Mark by Mark Jacobs bags. I don't know. Maybe there was some damage to them. I have no idea. But this sold for $52.50 on the real reel. My commission rate was 30%, so my payout was $16. And I split the profit of that item in half, so I made $8 and my friend made $8. The next item was my second best real real sale it sold on april 6th it was by the brand emmanuel ungaro and again this was a 1980s piece it was this really cool red and black wool evening jacket it was even missing a button but it sold for 356 dollars and i got a 60 percent commission rate so my payout was 214 dollars that one i actually found at a goodwill in a chicago suburb i didn't really find that much good stuff there like most of what we found was just like Meh, and I don't know, it was very slim pickings, but I found this and this in and of itself was more than enough. I only had to pay $7.99 for this piece and my payout was $205.61. It was amazing. Like, I was so excited. The next thing to sell sold on April 8th. It was this pair of AGL taupe leather ballet flats. These I found at a local thrift store um, and I had $3.99 into them. Isn't that amazing? I don't think they knew what they had on their hands. It sold for $56. My commission rate was 30%. I got a payout of $17. So I made a net profit of $12.81 on that. That's definitely something that I would probably in the future just list myself because they did not price them very high to begin with. The next thing to sell was on April 24th. It was this new with tags Parker black label pink v-neck dress. This is something that I got in a wholesale palette that I purchased off of a fellow reseller. My average cost of goods per item was $3.92. Parker and I have a weird relationship. I just can't really move Parker pieces. I don't know what it is. And so I just wanted to see what would happen if I sent them a Parker piece and see how much money I could make off of it. Um, and it did not disappoint. I think I'll send all of my Parker pieces to them from now on. And maybe this one just had such good luck because it was new with tags. And I'll be honest, it's pretty gaudy. Like if I remember correctly, along the neckline, there was like all these rhinestones and it was like heavily embellished. This was actually purchased once and returned that's another thing about the real real is like so many pieces get returned I would say probably at least a third of the items of mine that have sold get returned and then they'll sell again and then maybe it'll stick that time and at thread up like they have the rule where if something gets returned once if it sells a second time they're just going to give you your payout no matter what um even if it gets returned again that's not the case with the real real I've had items that have been returned twice three times even 
and I have not gotten a payout for it. They just keep putting it back up for sale and I just have to hope that someone buys it again. So this particular piece, it did get returned, but it sold a second time and it stuck. It sold for $103.50. My commission rate was 40% on that. So I only got a payout of $41, but again, I'm not gonna complain because I don't know that I would have been able to get a payout of $41 if I were to list it myself. So I had a net profit once you factor in my cost of goods of $37.48. The next thing to sell was on April 26th. It was this Diane von Furstenberg V-neck knee length dress in a really pretty like cobalt blue color. That sold for $40. I had a 30% commission rate on it. So I only got a $12 payout. I had $9.96 into this piece. I picked it up at that pop-up consignment sale that I talked about already. So I made a profit of $2.04. I should have absolutely just kept that on my reselling platforms and not sent it in. I wanted to see how Diane von Furstenberg did, but I don't think it's worth sending to the real real. I would just sell it yourself. The next and last thing to sell that we'll talk about because we're just covering three months worth of sales in this video is by the brand Red Valentino. Um, I specifically remember Jack saying in one of his videos, do not send Red Valentino to the real real because they don't price it very high. He said to just sell it yourself. But again, I just wanted to see how it would do. It was this pair of rubber bow accents rain boots. They were pretty cute. And to be honest, um, the resale value on these weren't super high. They sold on the real real for $50. And that's probably about what I would have gotten for them on, you know, a platform like Poshmark or eBay. The difference is that I only had a 40% commission rate on the real real, whereas I would have made 80 to 85% of that sale had I sold it myself through you know, like Poshmark or eBay. So I only got a $20 payout and that was one of the commissioned items from my friend at church. So I got 10 and they got 10. So let's go over my numbers. I sold 24 items on the real real in a three month span, which I think is pretty great. I don't know, like that's not bad given the fact that I haven't sent them very many items. In total, my items have sold for $2,352. However, my payout has only come out to $941 for those 24 items. And my cost of goods for those 24 items was $211.31. Therefore, my actual net profit from the real real in three months has been $862.42 which I'm pretty happy with. However, you know, the difficult thing with the real real moving forward for me is going to be that I don't have very many things to send them. Like that first box was pretty big because it was an accumulation of nicer things that I had found over the course of like two, three years. And it was my higher end pieces that just hadn't moved yet. So I don't have that kind of accumulation to pull from anymore, which is why I know that moving forward, I'm only gonna be able to send them like five, 10 things at a time. Um, and that's okay, we'll see what happens. You know, even if I'm only making like 50 to $100 a month from the real real, the truth is it is money that is earned pretty passively because they're taking the pictures, they're taking care of the shipping, they are taking care of customer service. And that's a pretty cool feeling knowing that all I did was put things in a box, write on a piece of paper what I was sending them and that's about it. So this is not a commercial for the real real by any means. I clearly don't know what I'm doing, but if you are interested in being along for the ride to see how this journey goes, definitely make sure that you hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and that's all I got for you. In about three months time, I will make another video. It'll probably be a lot shorter, but I will continue sharing with you how the real real has been going for me. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.